Hello, hello, welcome to the Linux lads. Welcome to the Linux lads. Hello, hello, you're all very welcome. So that sounded like fucking Bosco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very deep voiced Bosco. Welcome <laughs> to the Linux lads. As usual, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. And it's very nice to be back. Um, yay. Obviously, uh, <laughs> yay, indeed. Uh, obviously, when we were uh, supposed to be back a few weeks before this, uh, you might have noticed the delay, guys. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, no, we just had life stuff going on, which we will get to. Guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is back. Back in oh, school. God. <laughs> Segway. Mike, do you want to <laughs> talk about that? Going back to school. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going back to school. Uh, Great. My, Next thing. All, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I, I decided that I'm not uh, educated enough and I need more school. So I'm going to start uh, a CS course next week, a bachelor's degree in uh, uh, some kind of computing bullshit or other. And uh, yes, four years of my life that I'm going to dedicate to it from now on. So it's going to be fun, fun, fun. I, I did the exact same thing as you um, in DIT. Um, yeah, a course where it's not called computer science, but it's basically is computer science, but they just give it a really long winded name to make it look better on your CV or something. I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an undertaking, but it's, uh, it's very, very worthwhile and very, very rewarding. Um, where, where are you doing it? Uh, and NCI uh, at NCI. Oh, so yeah. that's, uh, they have a, they have a, uh, what you call it, where, you know, the building where the school is campus uh, near the IFSC, which is advantageous. I mean, it would be if I actually went, if I actually physically was ever present in the office anymore. I think it's technically in the IFSC. <laughs> yeah, but you won't be like in the IFSC. You'll be looking at it through a screen. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I know it basically it's close to the office, which doesn't matter really now, but since it's a four year old, four year commitment, then I might, I still might come to it that I'll be going from work to, uh, from work to school. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's meant to be half decent. So, uh, that's good. I looked at, obviously I looked at the brochure and there's a lot of theory that I'm basically, uh, my goal is to become a developer. I'm missing a lot of theory. I can do quite well in Python, but I need kind of deeper background. I need a maths that I don't have and so on. And so, and also like I could do with uh, a bit more challenge for my old tired brain. So, you know, midlife crisis, some people get themselves a Porsche. I've got myself a university. You'll, you'll get a degree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose getting a degree is better than a Ferrari. Ah, it's very true, yeah. Unless unless you're um, John Carmack, in which case you get both. <laughs> we won't talk about him. Um, uh, I don't know why, because I don't really know anything about him. I know who he is and what he did, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Ferraris, excellent he, segue. He's, he's a again. dirty Facebook employee now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Anyway, God, stop. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, speaking of Ferraris, completely ruined my segue, but I passed my driving test. Yay! Hey, congratulations! I, it took me till I was nearly 34 to do it, but you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's been a long, epic Icelandic saga, and it's uh, it's really, yeah, it's, it's like an inexplicable relief to get to this point where I can actually say, I wait, I actually passed my driving test last week. What the hell? <laughs> like, I, my third attempt um in the last two years um but that doesn't tell you everything i first started learning to drive when i was 19 and uh that, and i'm i'm turning 34 actually i am 34 shit <laughs> it was my birthday two days ago well, um, welcome to the club happy and, and happy birthday yes oh thank you <laughs> so it's been 15 years trying to learn to drive and i finally got it um you know obviously there was breaks in the middle i haven't been constantly learning to drive for 15 years that would be crazy i would have given up halfway through but like um you know if it, if it went any further than five tests i think i would have just given up like <laughs> honestly i think i would have said no fuck that i'm just gonna take a bus um but yeah so complete and utter joy and relief uh amongst all the other stuff 
<laughs> well, <laughs> you know? now now we are go- are we going to welcome you to the joys of of car ownership anytime soon? Yes, actually, yes. My dear, my dear mother is donating me her old car. Um, it's about twelve years old, but whatever. Beggars can't be choosers, and it's it's you know twelve years old. It's better than twenty years. Like it's still a car. Yeah. Wait, which car? Uh, it's a it's a little Hyundai hatchback. It's a bit of a oh. hairdresser car, but you know. Uh, you, you know, don't don't this it is. I I don't know what it is, but it's whatever it is is always bigger than mine or ours. We have um, we have a very tiny little Skoda that uh, basically. Oh, the city go. Yeah, but it's you know well, yeah. it gets us from A to B, and if I if I could change it, it would be more like inside equipment, and rather than the size, the size is fine. I can park it anywhere. If if I can park it, then anybody can. <laughs> Um, apparently the city goes from, from, I don't know if it's from this year on or was it last year on, are going to be 100% electric. So the fact that yeah. you have a petrol one is a, uh, is a rare one now. Yeah, it is. It's, well, this one is about four years old, so they are going to make them only electric. It makes sense. I mean, come on, the car oh, yeah. has got a one Whatever liter, did, one yeah. liter engine in there and, uh, it you 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 fill it up for forty euros and you 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 drive around for a month like it, it's incredible it's like so much cheaper than the bus I can't even believe it, which is not <laughs> great by the way I would rather that the, the bus was cheaper and uh, public transport was much better but what can you do exactly exactly um Connor we haven't really heard from you um so my news really is well I suppose same as everyone is locked down and getting frustrated and want to punch my uh, fist through a wall no not really um <laughs> so in order to get ah, my bitch, uh, <laughs> in order to get my zen on i went on a staycation because we were for a bit allowed to travel around the country and we opened up to that amount we couldn't travel internationally so i went down to um county kerry um won't say exactly whereabouts but um uh, anyone who asks, anyone asks me off air, I'll tell you directly where it is. But uh, I went down to County Kerry, which is southwest Ireland, very rural, very beautiful, very ornate. So got my zen on with like nice, calm kind of beaches and stuff like that. So <laughs> it was a nice two week uh, holiday down there. So with social distancing. So um, I do do have um, extended family, and um, they're around. Um, but it was the kind of thing of waving from two meters away. <laughs> <laughs> I I find actually, yeah, like uh, me and the girlfriend did uh, a few staycations during the summer. Uh, like you, um, we went to Wicklow and to Galway and stuff like that. But um, and it is it is nice, like because we actually do have quite a a lovely country and right in our doorstep. So why not why not see it? So um. But yeah, I noticed that down the country, people are so much better with COVID stuff than in Dublin. <laughs> like, no wonder we have the highest cases all Level the time. Level three. <laughs> and no wonder we're on lockdown again for three weeks. Wasn't there a fucking illegal ra- uh, rave there recently, somewhere in South Dublin, that the guards were called to? And of course, the yeah, guards probably. arrived when it had already been dispersed. <laughs> I, think, I think it kind of happens every day or something. I don't know. It's, it's like everywhere you went down the country, like in shops, everywhere, everyone's wearing a mask, everyone's sanitizing their hands, everyone's doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And in Dublin, you see them walking around with this like shit with the mask, like not covering their nose and all this. And and I hate that. Uh, one, the one thing I found out recently is O'Neill's, the um, GAD jersey um, supplier, um, are making, which is a good thing, making reusable, washable masks, but like in the, the all the jersey colors and stuff like that. So you can get your GA jersey and you can get your, your mask in the same colors. So fair play. Elisa made a pair of really nice masks for both of us and uh, they are really lovely. Uh, it took her a while. I mean, it's not it's not easy to do, but... Uh, we don't have to now do we use the disposable ones because you know it's it's good that you that, that to have something that you can just throw into the washing machine and reuse rather yeah. than create more garbage it, in it's the a, world. It's an interesting scenario when you find yourself hanging your masks on the washing line. It's the, this is the world we're in now. <laughs> I'm I'm hand I hand wash mine, but uh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to do the cliche of saying I went into um. Uh, 
a shop and bought them and went thanks pennies it actually wasn't pennies it was done stores but so. <laughs> <laughs> oh i i forgot one thing i have to mention this otherwise Rocco is gonna come over and kill me i was on linux spotlight it's not out yet hopefully it's gonna be soon when when he, when Rocco gets to it but it was an interesting experience uh very conscious of the whole video thing but then i started talking and he couldn't Dark stop of course me. you never told us i did I, he, i'm he, sure he told me oh, yeah, i'm I'm, I'm clearly his favorite out of yours too <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> i'm just, so sorry i should have um this is I such a, a rift within the trio has oh emerged. my god yeah no 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 we have to split up like um uh, yeah take that right Rocco uh, is the Yoko on the Linux lab. I was literally going to make it a uh, Beatles reference. <laughs> I, that's that's not true. I have to. Whenever anybody mentions Yoko Ono in this contest, I have to remind them that that's not true. She didn't break down Beatles. John Lennon was a prick, regardless. And uh, there is a great episode about this on the You're Wrong About podcast, which has got other great episodes. So. Uh, yeah, I, honestly, I don't know that much about the situation. I, <laughs> well, anyway, I, I, I listened to a podcast about it, and now I have an opinion, which is basically what we provide here, as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's anyway. It's also a Linux podcast. Did you guys know that? <laughs> so, um, oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, first first up, I guess we'll 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 get through one bit of Linux thing, and then we'll see where it goes. One bit of Linux thing. That's amazing broadcasting right there um <laughs> nvidia to acquire arm for 40 billion dollars pinky to to chin yeah <laughs> not much not much uh not much linux in there um well actually that's not true everything that runs on arm is mostly linux no yeah well except after except for iphones obviously dig up mike dig up <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so it, this was quite interesting because when I in it first heard about this news, I was thinking, nah, really? I mean, do NVIDIA first have that amount of uh, money? Even, like, I was, wasn't was thinking there was going to be 40 billion, but even then I was like, do NVIDIA have that much disposable income? And also the fact that NVIDIA are a customer. <laughs> so wouldn't like regulators step in and say, no, no, you you can't bite the regulator and the customer or and be, be one of the customers. Um, but apparently um, it's all fine and dandy and they're able to do it well uh regulators for 40 for 40 billion smackaroonies regulators are fine who's not fine with it is the chinese government the the, the british government have a say because they feel like it's their company the americans obviously <laughs> isn't arm china like going off on its own thing Pardon, pardon my ignorance, but I thought NVIDIA actually manufactured their own chips. They do GPUs, but they, they do Tegras ARM. ARM itself doesn't actually manufacture chips. They, what they do is they, they design and then other manuf manufacturers use their licensing. So uh, so okay, people, people like Samsung for their Exynos chips and Apple were doing it for a while for their iPhones. Um, in fact, well, Apple are still doing it because it's, it's um, uh, Apple design, but obviously the it's an ARM chip, so they still have to use a, a, a license to do it. Uh, it's 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 all rather complicated, but essentially ARM Holdings, which is what was purchased, was the um, license er, not the licensee. It's all bullshit anyway. Like. Uh... So, so as you Connor, as you said, ARM makes the plans or the blueprints, sells them to whoever wants to buy them, and then people can make their own chips, which sounds great, and it led to the revolution of iPhone, of sm smartphones, and everything. But what it also means is that you cannot take ARM Linux and install it on any uh, on any ARM chipset. It has to be the specific Linux for the bloody for the bloody chipset, and that's just annoying as hell. Like. I hope that, and I, actually, I shouldn't say that, but I secretly hope that NVIDIA buys it and screws it to the ground and that will give space for something a bit more open because, uh, we, you know, ARM's not open. Yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, ARM is, is, is definitely something that Linux people would know about a lot because you just tend to get, I don't know, it tends to be the, 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 the flavor of the month, you know, <laughs> because a lot of these uh, Linux devices that are coming out in the last few years tend to run ARM. Um, yeah, yeah. Pine Phone, Pine Sixty Four, Raspberry Pi, for example. Yeah, the the Pinebook mm. Pro, not Pine Sixty Four. The company, get it right, Hunter. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's yeah. I don't know. 
that's an interesting development. Very, very interesting. But also kind of not that surprising either. I mean, there was bound to be some movement in that industry at some point. We were due something like this at some point. This, ready for disruption, yeah. I wonder what's, uh, <laughs> yeah. what's it going to do to the business relationships because Apple are famously not very friendly to NVIDIA or with NVIDIA and Apple are switching to ARM big time. Obviously, there was the, before we went on the break, there was the news that Apple are going to redo their entire Mac line so that it only runs on Apple Silicon, which is ARM based anyway so uh in you know there are other manufacturers everybody who does ARM is now going to have to be paying to nvidia and if you if you previously pay money for arm designs you paid it to a company who wasn't competing with you they did a few chips but they never really sold any volume now if you are if you are competing with nvidia that's a different thing so that might destroy the uh, business relationships in in the whole in the whole industry it might be interesting yeah um, yeah, there was some debate that I was reading up on that in relation to the speculation before it was officially announced. Um, so I don't know if it means that um, Apple have a license in perpetuity uh, or do they have to play an annual fee or something like that. I mean, it could be that they have a license for a certain design in perpetuity. But if they wanted to say, OK, no, um uh, arm holdings which uh, nvidia have just bought have come out with a new design we want to license that that is it per design that they license it? i don't it's it's all of that kind of thing so in theory they could have they already have a license it could be in perpetuity they could have spent that much money acquiring the license that they've secured that and it mightn't affect them at all and they could just carry on doing what they're doing so who knows I, I wonder, and this is probably a, a bit of a moonshot, but I wonder if NVIDIA could be making some sort of a play in the CPU market. Well, I think they want to. Um, mm. That'll be very long term, but uh, that'll be yeah. f- five, ten years out from now because uh, uh, Apple are already doing that, but they've already done the R&D and everything. Yeah, the R&D takes a long time. <laughs> but but <laughs> yeah. I, 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 ARM has been doing the R&D. So NVIDIA, instead of doing their R&D, just buys ARM. And there you go, NVIDIA has CPUs. So, And, and we're already if, seeing things like ARM servers and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, could be yeah. on the cards sooner than you think. Um, to counterbalance that, um, somebody in our chat, I can't remember who it was, uh, linked a RISC-V possible desktop um, CPU. Um, so that is quite interesting. Risk Five being uh, open hardware CPU, um, as Tad pointed out, doesn't mean GPU. The GPU I think is wrapped up in in proprietary um, design and everything like that. But I think it's an open design CPU. So again, mm. because all the momentum is ARM these days, so we could be talking five, ten, fifteen years from now. It would take it's it's a big ship and it would take a lot for it to steer in another direction because everything seems to be steam, steering arms way now, but it is um, an interesting viable alternative. Well, there is Risk Five, there is Open Power, which is uh, you know another uh, different instruction set that also is that coming is from coming PowerPC and, and IBM? Uh, yeah, or yeah, the yeah, same or I a similar. So. I it might be not from them, but the same architecture. Yeah. It is. It is from IBM. I think IBM actually donated the ISA or some some intellectual property to the foundation recently. I think I remember them saying it. And uh, you know, I I hope there's going to be a bit more uh, market shakeup because uh, as it is now, it's uh, it's annoying. And uh, there is, but like on the other hand, maybe all of this will kick Intel into gear as well, because they seem to be doing uh, not very well at the moment. And I really enjoy using Intel uh, CPUs. I would enjoy using AMD CPUs. I just don't think I've ever had one. But I think I think there is some kind of a disruption and uh, more competition is a good thing. So Yeah, the, the market has been too kind of static for too long, I find. Like, there, it's just been the same two or three companies kind of have kept everything fairly wrapped up for the last few years in terms of any sort of silicon gpu cpu 
Um, it's always been a bit of a duopoly, especially for CPUs and GPUs. Like you, in the consumer market anyway, you're talking Intel versus AMD or NVIDIA versus AMD. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, ARM is has been kind of localized to the mobile market, but now it's starting to kind of put tendrils into the desktop market. But I don't know. I still think that's a, a little way off. Well, well, if you think about the size of the market, people are spending thousands on like it's not it's not a reality to now dish out over a thousand euro on a uh, on a on a phone that runs ARM chip, and it's not a reality to dish out uh, about uh, the same money for a tablet like the iPad Pros are extremely expensive. I'm not sure how much the Samsung Galaxy Tabs, the big one, uh, cost, but uh, I don't think they are cheap either. No, I so, bought one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go so they are the, the, the market is the market is expensive the, the market is expensive you can tell i have my wits together so they are don't i uh, <laughs> there's a lot of money in this and nvidia obviously wants a slice of it uh, they think it's worth for them 40 billion whatever was it you dollars probably and uh, i just hope that the whole thing opens and we will have portable devices and and uh, low low a low energy chips that we can install any Linux distribu distribution mm. on. Do, do you guys think that the whole, I don't know, I, I wouldn't call it Linux Hearts ARM or ARM, but I don't know, there's been definitely a bit of a cross pollination, whatever you want, whatever other wanky word I can come up with. Um, <laughs> is, synergy. Uh, synergy, yeah. <laughs> Tip of my tongue. Um, like our, the whole ARM slash Linux thing has, I don't know, it's been very integrated over the last few years. D like, do you see like, my, I don't know, like NVIDIA Shield tablets? I mean, they already run uh, like a, a stripped down version of Linux, I believe, or a heavily modified Android. One. Yeah, it's they basically want, Android. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but do you see that kind of, I don't know, basically what I'm saying is what, how do you see this affecting Linux? Well, the Linux as in Linux Foundation, the kernel is going to be fine because you need something to run on these things and that's one of, that's what's going to run on it most of the time obviously apple will have their broken bsd but uh linux is going to run most of these things <laughs> uh i got that little swipe there don't worry <laughs> but uh they I, I just don't think we're gonna get windows on arm <laughs> uh, there, there are, there are. Uh, i don't think it's like Maybe Windows will have to change to the Linux kernel to be able to run on a to run on ARM. But the like you have one thing is like you heard it like, here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, one thing is things like Raspberry Pi that I think will carry on. I mean, I don't know how long has the Raspberry Pi has uh, like how long they keep a single chipset for, but uh, I'm sure they can always find something that's gonna be uh, open enough for them to be able to make the distribution and use the drivers and everything. The same for, for Pine 64. So the single board computers are going to be there. In fact, the whole IoT space, I sound like a douchebag, Jesus. The whole, you know, the, everybody who wants to run IoT will buy some kind of a ARM powered thing and throw Linux on it most of the time because that's what IoT is going to be. Or that's what IoT is already, right? But in terms of like our distributions, desktop, desktop Linux, I don't think it's a very good thing. Uh, there are, you know, how much effort it uh, it looks like for the, it looks like a lot of effort to make distributions specifically for the Pinebook Pro, and that's one extremely open example of the whole ARM ecosystem. It doesn't seem, to, I, it, you know, unless somebody fixes the closeness of the, and the fraction, the, uh, the the way the whole system is fractioned. Like, yeah. unless you can take a Samsung chipset and a Qualcomm chipset and install the same Linux on both of them, I can't see it's going to be any good for us. Well, this is the same old argument we've been talking about for two years now, is that, like, everything needs more openness. Like, nothing is the right amount of open, really. Um, like, we don't have a, an architecture that is truly like open and available like risk five is kind of the closest possible thing we've gotten in in quite a long time what about x86 um i don't well, have yeah, any I problems I, it's, installing I, linux on most laptops no i'm more talking about something like i'm talking about the architecture itself like the 
the architect like something that anyone can because risk risk v right. or five is open source right it's open yes, in some way yeah 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 so we don't actually have an architecture like that they tend to be very closely guarded secrets well maybe if nvidia shakes up the market and makes everybody angry the, the, the big corporations like google will realize that if they want anything uh like that they will need to share and put money into something that's uh doesn't belong to anybody in a particular but belongs to everyone like the linux foundation when everyone realizes that crowdsourcing development and crowdsourcing all of this stuff is way more efficient than anything you can do as a private company then that's when we'll have it yeah oi that's communism a broad statement <laughs> but i don't know no nah, it's true i am the guy on a linux podcast so tangentially related um just since we're talking about that um microsoft has released the kernel source code for its new surface duo um my understanding of this device is that it's a foldable tablet it can take phone calls but i don't think that that's its main purpose um and it's the whole thing of it has two screens so you could open it up and be swiping on both screens with multiple applications or you can kind of prop it up and then touch type on one screen and have the screen or the other screen um at 90 degrees and be viewing content or uh or just simply prop it up and watch a video it's like it's like the Samsung foldable phone, but it has got two screens rather than one because you can actually distinctly tell them apart. Markers Brownlee was treating it in his reviews as a phone, so I just take it as his face value, and it's a phone for me. It's not a particularly pretty one, uh, but does it mean that you can run Linux on the on the Duo? Uh, not so far. This is in early days. To just saying that they released the source code for the kernel. So there you go. Hmm. It would be good if we had like I mean it's a I don't know how much it costs I think it's like thirteen hundred money but uh, yeah it's it's know. about thirteen or fourteen hundred smackaroonies but it would be good to have something portable uh, that you can put proper Linux on and maybe uh, you know because the Pinebook Pro is uh, super Pinebook Pro the Pine Phone is very good but uh, for for people who want to tinker, but it's not a very powerful device. Obviously, it can't be for $200. Um, the, and we are missing something in the kind of higher end of the spectrum. Uh, mm. Well, it's, it's pure speculation, but they went from the, they released a Pine Book, and that was reasonably successful. Then it came out with a Pine Book Pro, where it was a more expensive, more powerful version of it. So maybe they're just testing the market with the Pine Phone, and there might be a Pine Phone Pro. I'm sure they're thinking about it. Doesn't mean that they're actually going to do it, but it it um it's in order to put um money where people's mouths are and like buy the device. <laughs> or I mean, there's it's it's take the Pine Phone is actually literally taken off like a rocket ship. I mean, the amount of people who are who are releasing different images for us. Um, there's about five or six different images at various le levels of stability and daily driverness. But, I mean, there's an active, vibrant community out there. So I, I don't see how they they wouldn't continue supporting that community. Yeah, I mean, they cut their cloth to suit their measure. So, uh, they, you know, they'll produce a device in accordance with the amount of people who they think will buy it. I mean speculation if they have a 200 euro device they could have a 300 euro or 350 euro more powerful device and have them both up on the website and says if you want a more inexpensive device and you don't mind the lower resolution screen or whatever the cost costing measure is or if you want, want to spend 350 euro or 400 euro or whatever the the more upper end price is say you get a better uh, CPU, you get a better screen, you get a better camera, whatever the extra incentive is, then I'm sure mm. certainly sure they could do that I will be more interested in like, probably not for me, but if we want if we want adoption you need people invested So you and you need, especially for so if you want somebody to make um, uh, to make money of it, it would have to be a more expensive device, I mean, it would have to be more powerful so something on the par with like the Galax the, the Galax Samsung Galaxy phones, but running pure Linux rather than a version of Android, would be 
would be interested in something that's optimized and I can actually work as a as a daily driver. And there we are going to, you know, with with some reason, and I can't figure what the reason would be for people to spend that much money on a Linux phone and not people who would buy it for tinkering purposes because you don't drop 1,000 euros on a tinkering toy. But for people who would buy it because it's, I don't know, secure or because it just offer a better experience. But, you know, the high end of the market... Um, well, I, I wasn't necessarily thinking that price point. I mean, you, you notice how much we guffawed when when Librem Five came out with their price point. I'm talking about three, three to four hundred euro mark, not seven hundred euro, eight hundred euro plus mark. I didn't like the Librem Five. I don't still don't like it because I think for what it is, is extremely expensive. Oh, you know, no disagreement you... there. So you know, especially the one. No, never mind. I'm not even going to make mention the Librem Five USA. And the outrageous price they are charging for it. But uh, I think they I should... think that was a marketing stunt, 100%. I think that was a marketing stunt. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, you know, I would like to see, and that's probably, there's no reason why it should exist because, uh, you know, market and everything. But I, I would like to see a high-end device that can be used as a daily driver. It's on par with uh, with your Samsung Galaxies and the latest iPhones. And, uh, well, obviously it would have to cost the same money. But even if it, they charge the same money, I'm not sure if it would be, if anybody can actually produce it at those prices. But basically, just put Linux on something that's uh, desirable from, uh, what you call it, from consumer point of view, like we do with laptops. You know, like there's a there's actually a very good article somewhere. I think Connor, you put it in. That, I, was, uh, I was just I was just about to segue to the the laptop. Um, thing, HP. So HP um, and Lenovo are supporting Ubuntu and Fedora is also going to be on Lenovo laptops, right? And that's great. And those are no but those are no cheap uh laptops. Those are like high end ones, aren't they? Initially because it's the same thing of what that um Pinephone are doing with their with their lower end, but of course their business customers are at a certain price point. Their price point is about a, a thousand dollars is what they tend to buy uh, buy laptops at um so initially they were coming out with just their ex their kind of business executive type of customers but they're they're now expanding it so x1 carbons they're uh, from their thin sleek and light um laptops to their p line workstations and now um AMD are coming in as well. So, or not AMD, um, um, HP are coming in as well. Sorry, I was I was looking at the other article that says that um, the Tuxedo computers are coming out with um laptops that have both Intel and AMD, um, which is all very good as well. And I think um, I think um, something in the back of my mind. I don't think I have it linked here in the show notes. But is it Slimbook are coming out with um a Slimbook Lite, which is more reasonably priced, like four hundred yeah. or five hundred euro laptop or something? So it's still it's still about that money. Yeah. So it's not it's not a budget laptop by any stretch of the imagination. But well, it is four or five hundred euro is actually a budget laptop. For, believe it or really? not, really? <laughs> yes. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Trust I me. I thought I thought like um. Budget laptop would be a 300, 200, 300 euro Chromebook. No, it's just a shite laptop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that, that, that you see, but you see, that's, uh, that might be like completely different depending who you ask. If you ask somebody who finds it very hard. Depends on what you together. want to do, obviously. Yeah. The segments of the, of the market, the people that, these manufacturers target for them budget is 400 to 600 um mid-range would be i don't know 600 to 800 and then um there's there's people uh, then there's the top end would start at a thousand i mean two three hundred is fine if you want to look at cats on reddit but like yeah. anything else is you know if you want to do stuff you know you you do have to go to that price range Look, I'm 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 all for this. Like I I like the idea that there is a very high end set of hardware with Linux on it with for, for a lot of money because that means that who people who drop that kind of money on this on this thing are gonna be invested in Linux. They are not buying it because uh, because it's a hundred quid cheaper without the Microsoft Windows license. They are buying it because they want this, and that's a great thing, right? Mm. So that means that we are gonna get. Uh, 
users who buy this, they are probably maybe already using Linux, but uh, they 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 really use it for a reason, and that's to me is important. Uh, there mm. is a lot of uh, push to market Linux to the uh, I even want to say an unwitting user, somebody who just doesn't even want to use a computer. I don't know about that, I mean, but I, people who I've I've seen enterprise orders of like fifteen plus order fifteen twenty orders of sixteen hundred euro laptops apiece. <laughs> it's it's not it's they wouldn't even um, it's not unheard of at all. But they wouldn't be offering it if people didn't want it. I mean, they're still a commercial yeah. company. So so obviously there's an, a demand for it there. So um, And it's not a new thing. I mean, HP, Lenovo, they're the kind of companies, if you were, obviously, I only found out a bit recently that they're, they're supporting a bud. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. But <laughs> that's not actually big news because all those kind of major laptop vendors definitely in their best interest to, to support linux and to offer and ship linux on their devices i mean <clears throat> and it's not a new thing either uh I, i've seen it years ago i uh, know okay it, it it kind of is um it's it is news that they're first it came out with lenovo's was supporting fedora and now um, dell have been doing it for years dell have been doing it for years in a Shh, don't talk about it. Yeah, of, you couldn't uh, find uh, it on their you, website. You won't, you won't find this link on our website at all. Um, it's the fact that they're open about it. It's it's there. They're doing it in significant volumes. Lenovo is actually expanding its its um laptop um lineup with that supporting Ubuntu. Um, in other words, they're talking to um Red Hat um in relation to uh, Fedora they're talking to the, the Fedora developers they're talking to Canonical they're like I'm sure these conversations have been going on in the background but it's they're finally seem to be aligning and committing to it and then the the train seems to be coming down the rails r- rather than uh little conversations here there at at, at at open source license um, open source conferences of hey hey guys um uh, hey you're a hp rep i see you're running ubuntu on your laptop um um is uh, are the big wigs in hp are ever going to do this uh no maybe not uh, yeah running humming and hawing um they're actually putting their money where their mouth is which is good it costs them basically nothing as well and well, they probably gain a few extra sales from it. So. You have to pay Canonical for uh, certification, I'm sure. Like you cannot just you cannot just say this is a Ubuntu certified with not and not uh, run it by Canonical and probably yeah, pay them for okay. the privilege. I, wasn't thinking, I would. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of certification. I wasn't if, thinking of that. Yeah. If if I was Canonical, I would be charging. To be honest, I don't know if they do, but I would. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure there. I mean, there, uh, uh, that's that's what the industry is. There has to be some kind of kickback. Uh, I get whenever you hear the big C word, you know there's a lot of money. That's how it goes in computers. <laughs> well, to be honest, uh, I, I, I really like it. I'm glad that we have got this end of the laptop market, and it looks like laptops are going down or PCs are going down as a as user as com- consumers switch to mobile devices. But for professionals, uh, Linux is actually gaining. I think it looks to me anyway. I didn't. I don't have any data, but just just from the coverage and from from news like this, I just would like to see uh, something that is cheap enough and maybe that's the that should be that's what it's uh, that's like okay let me collect my thoughts right because i'm still going back to the stupid arm and nvidia right why i like why i like x86 laptops is because when i had no money and i really was really interested in linux i i went to a shop i got an old hp for 200 whatever put an ssd for another 30 euros or pounds or whatever back then and installed any linux on it and that was, you know, there was no, uh, de- you couldn't go for that money. You couldn't buy any decent, uh, a decent, MR- any decent computer. Now, what is a person who doesn't have money going to do in a, in a 
like if they cannot spend that much money that you want that uh, Lenovo and HP are charging for this, or if they cannot buy the slightly cheaper Entrovers and uh, stuff like that, if the re if the cheaper end of the industry switches to ARM, and all you're ever gonna be able to get is uh, some kind of a Chromebook or uh, Windows on a on a proprietary ARM chipsets or Nvidia OS, right, or a Mac. So my my point is basically. Uh, Linux is great because on with an, you can buy a cheap but still good uh, Lenovo, like you can buy the T450s or the whatever they are called, and you can drop any Linux on it and it'll work. And that's that's awesome because that can take people who don't have much means, students and so, they can learn about Linux and they can start using it. And when, when they actually get a job, they can uh, buy one of these uh, new uh, thing stations or whatever. But if that goes away, if the if the lower end of the market is uh, some stupid ARM chip that you can't put Linux on, then that, that is go, going to go away as well, and that will be a shame. Well, hopefully it would be a shame, not will be a shame. Yeah, I can only agree. Um, hopefully um, they're going to start um, whittling down the various different versions of, of the ARM chipset with this. Uh, like... Hopefully, in some time in the future, you can get uh, like there is now, where pretty much um, Qualcomm with their Snapdragon power the vast majority of mobile phones, and that's what uh, then the drivers are known, um, and then they target that. I mean, sure, Samsung make their own ones, and um, um, and sure, what, uh, yeah, yeah uh, than I'm I'm Qualcomm. speaking in very broad terms, not speaking for in specifics. Um, so I'm I'm imagining a world that doesn't exist at the moment. That hopefully is like, okay, uh, this let's say HP's budget line um, laptops that are based on ARM are using the Snapdragon um, chipset, then um, Linux developers um linux distribution developers are like grant that's a known quantity we can we can target that that's effectively what i'm coming from hopefully it's, there's not too many different targets like there is at the moment with arm mm, i'm not optimistic it's it's difficult to even get a distribution for the raspberry pi like difficult relatively compared to uh the plethora of distributions that you can put on your uh x86 laptop so uh, just getting into the, the final stretch here, uh, we did give a little shout out because it's the new season and uh, oh, we didn't mention this two years of Linux lads. Hey, hey, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, it is actually quite cool when you can say a number of years rather than just one and a bit. <laughs> uh, so it's nice to have, you know, a full fat two to the second annual Linux lads. Um, we have a few shout outs <laughs> on Telegram. Uh, Ali, oh, I'm sorry, Ali, I'm probably pronouncing your name completely wrong, but Ali Molai, uh, hope, hope, all the, hope you the best, all the best, I guess he's saying from Iran, peace sign. Um, and then Aiden, Aiden, uh, he wants to shout out his podcast, Tabs, Not Spaces, triggered. Uh, <laughs> uh, not me, but Mike. Um, yeah, twice weekly news roundup podcast, as mentioned by Joe Ressington on the last late night Linux. Yeah, we don't like to talk about you, Joe, because we don't like you. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're joking. Now who's triggered? <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, as Mike pointed out, the title is wrong, but it actually isn't wrong. But that's a discussion for another day. Please note my uh, note my enormous restraint at this point. <laughs> so yeah, go to tabs not space and navigate through this information superhighway to tabs not spaces dot com and log on your AOL hundred free minutes to visit that podcast. Don't you mean IOL? IOL. Oh yeah, that was yeah. We actually had was IOL. That in I I learned online. Yeah, we did actually. <laughs> Holy shit! I forget about that. <laughs> um, did you get a free cd yes yes <laughs> <laughs> and one of my oh no joke one of my friends thought that the entire internet was on the cd and that's how you got it for free Lit he actually thought that uh to be of a uh, nostalgic kind of throwback whenever you see some old bugger with um an at aircom.net email address <laughs> 
Oh yeah, you still see that to this day, like at or, aircom.net. I was like, all right, you're at least 45. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, or uh, indigo.com. Remember indigo was another one. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, aircom.net was very ubiquitous. Yeah, yeah I know. Aircom.net was the big one. Yeah, IOL faded out quite a bit earlier. Um, God, I completely forgot about that. Thank you for that memory. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Tad wishes us good luck for the new season. How are hey, you, Tad. Tad? Thank you, Tad. Yes. Um, he's, we're well familiar with him. Mike Mike thinks that Mike is right about tabs, not spaces. That's confusing. You're going to have to do, I guess you're just going to have to look at our telegram. <laughs> it, it's, 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 my excep- it's my exception here. We're... Yeah, it's a my exception. My exception is okay. I guess you're just going to have to go to linuxlads.com forward slash telegram join the telegram group to know what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, oh this oh, is oh. smoother than uh, Linus Tech Tips segues. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I've been wanting to mention that, okay, because everyone, like, I wanted to say this earlier, actually. This is the final thoughts, okay? It's like the Jerry Springer bit at the end where he sits in front of that pastel colored wall. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so people pers- were, yeah, sorry. Mike, you were saying earlier about like devices being desirable. And it's like, I want to like call out the Linux community on this because people, just because something is easy and attractive, it does not mean that it is bad. <laughs> so stop doing that, please. And that has been your chain for thoughtful hour. <laughs> yes, because it's just something I feel very strongly about. Because I've received so much crap for using Pop! OS. And it's like, oh, you're using a well-made, attractive, functioning distro. (laughs) You're like a total idiot. (laughs) Yeah, why don't you just do everything in assembly? Because I'm a human and I like things to be easy. So anyway, that's my rant for this week. So we uh, we have a new logo and we actually have a new store as well. So um, if Shane leaves this in, then all of these things will happen. Um. So, get go on the store and find some fancy T-shirts with our new logo on it. And what is the URL of the store, Connor? What you mean by if Shane leaves this in, if Shane finishes the logo on time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was implied. This is entirely optional. It will be linuxlads.com/store, which will probably just navigate to teespring.com. <laughs> More than likely. So yeah, that about wraps up the uh, premiere of season five. Ha ha. Um, so socials, uh, Telegram, I mentioned it earlier, linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. Um, you can get us on Steam now. Uh, the URL is far too long to say, so it's in the show notes, so go click on it. Um, or go to Steam and just type in linuxlads.podcast. No, Linux, not linuxlads.podcast. What the hell? Linux Lads podcast. Uh, just type it into the Steam community and you'll probably find the group. Um, Twitter, we're at Linux Lads. Uh, we're pretty active on Twitter. Uh, we're also on Mastodon. Uh, you can get there, linuxlads.com forward slash Mastodon. Um, email show at linuxlads.com. You, please use that email address. No one ever emails us. Um, you well, can give donate. us back to the new season. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you have an excuse now. Um, so linuxlads.com forward slash donate. If you would like to give us some money, um, we we don't deserve your money, really. I think, but like, <laughs> uh, I I'd still want it. Um, uh, you are officially now the head of our marketing department, Shane. You just proved the way that you know what you're doing. With it. I'm too <laughs> honest for sales or marketing. I'm like, hey, I'd like your money, but if you don't want to give it to me, that's fine. Um, I think that works pretty well for us. I have a job; it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, we're we are kind of thinking of setting up a Patreon in future. Um, but uh, this is a little unscripted. But um, but yeah, if if anyone's interested in that, do let us know what kind of rewards you'd be interested in on Patreon. That's just the only thing we can't really figure out. <laughs> I think we've uh, PayPal and Kofi at the moment. Yeah, there's some shite all out of yeah. pa- <laughs> Patreon's very sexy these days. Everyone has a Patreon. Except everybody else is calling it Patreon, I think, no? Patreon? I, I don't know. Because I think you say patronize, don't you? You say patronage. I, I, I've heard patronize. You say patronage. Watch, watch Jimmy Carr. He's like, uh, 
he says, an American once told me that I was patronizing. And I looked at him and said, I think you'll find it. It's pronounced patronizing. Or maybe it was the other <laughs> way around. I don't know. It's Jimmy Carr. It was funny. Well, I don't know. Speaking because... of wrapping things up. Yeah, yeah, but I just want to get that point home. It's pa- patronizing, okay? Uh, All right. Because you patronage, patronage, patron. Oh God! <laughs> I've completely just what? No. Anyway, we need to stop this podcast right now. Um. So yeah, thanks for joining us. I've been Shane. I've been Connor, and I've been Mike. Thank you very much for listening. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.